What's going on everyone? My name's Obi and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. In today's episode, we're talking about something that sounds like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. Electric vehicle owners are getting paid by the grid. So yeah, you guys heard that right, getting paid, not just paying for electricity. Now look, I say this in almost every episode, but as you guys know, I'm a neo bull, but this story is bigger than just any one company. This is about the entire energy ecosystem transforming right before our eyes. So whether you're here for neo specifically, or you just wanna understand um, where things are heading directionally, you've come to the right place and sit tight, cause trust me, this story gets wild. So check this out. Back in late September, a story broke about an electric vehicle owner in Wuhan who made 60 ren per hour by just plugging his car into the grid now 60 ren per hour might not sound like retirement money but the point is he was getting paid 60 ren an hour that's substantial to do nothing except just have his car sit there now this wasn't some one-off publicity stunt this happened at a supercharger and swapping station in august 2025 and it immediately sparked this massive debate across chinese social media is this real is this sustainable and most importantly how do i get in on this now let's break down what v2g or vehicle to grid uh technology is because the technology is beautifully simple but the implications are massive so like i said v2g stands for vehicle to grid the technology was first proposed by a professor named william kempton back in the 1990s at the university of delaware his big idea was what if we stopped thinking about electric vehicles as just cars and started thinking about them as mobile batteries? Because that's what they are, right? These massive energy storage units on wheels. Here's how the economics work and here's where it gets interesting. During off-peak hours like midnight to 8 a.m., electricity is cheap. We're talking 0.3 to 0.5 ren per kilowatt hour. So you charge your car basically when electricity is dirt cheap, then during peak hours, typically afternoon into the evening when everyone's running AC, cooking dinner, electricity prices skyrocket Some in some areas up to uh, three ren per kilowatt hour. So with a traditional charging pile, electricity only flows one way into your car. But V to G charging stations have bi-directional capability. You could pull power from your car and actually sell it back to the grid when prices are hot. Let me give you an actual math from a Beijing demonstration session. The discharge subsidy there is seven ren per kilowatt hour. Charging there costs residents uh, 0.47 ren per kilowatt hour. If you got a 52 kilowatt hour battery and you discharge 30 uh, kilowatts per hour, per session doing this 250 times a year nets you 1700 ren. And in Wuhan, the price spread is even crazy. Over 2.5 ren difference between off-peak and on-peak hours. Now this technology has been theoretically possible for decades, but up until this point, it's been stuck in a lab. The batteries weren't good enough. The protocols between charging stations and cars were a mess. And frankly, the market mechanisms weren't in place. But things have changed dramatically. In 2023, regions across China have started rolling out vehicle to grid stations. Then in 2024, the government released, the Chinese government released a notice on the first batch of pilot pro uh, projects for large scale vehicle to grid uh, technology projects. Nine cities got selected, Shanghai, Beijing, and Shenzhen, Shenzhen uh, being among them. This moved vehicle to grid from lab project to we're actually doing this at scale now. And here's where it gets interesting for the long-term picture. Professor Yang Mingao, this guy's basically one of the godfathers of China's EV industry. He said something at the Tata International Forum in 2025 that stuck with me. He said, in the future, electric vehicles will not only be a means of transportation, but also a money-making tool for many families. He's predicting that by 2050, China will have over 350 million electric vehicles with a combined energy storage capacity of 24 billion kilowatts. That's equivalent to China's entire 
daily electricity consumption. So think about that for a second. Every single kilowatt hour of electricity in China that China uses in a day could theoretically be stored in an EV fleet. Now the make money from your car angle is sexy and that's what's getting most of the attention or headlines, but it's actually the smallest part of the story. The real revolution here is how this fundamentally transforms the energy grid. China's power system has what they call the Twin Peaks problem. Summer AC loads and winter heating loads create these massive spikes in demand. Traditionally, you saw that by building gas-fired power plants or pumped hydro storage facilities, but those are expensive and take forever to build. Vehicle to grid offers this incredibly flexible, low cost alternative. According to the Tsinghua Sichuan Energy Research Institute, by 2030, vehicle to grid could provide 200 million kilowatts of off peak load reduction capacity. That's 10 to 20% of China's maximum load. By 2035, they're projecting 800 to 9 million kilowatts, which is nearly 40% of the nation's total load. Let that sink in. We're talking about essentially solving China's short-term peak load problem by just intelligently managing when EVs charge and uh, discharge energy. But there's an even bigger piece of the puzzle renewable energy. Wind and solar, they're fantastic, but they're intermittent. The sun doesn't shine at night. The wind doesn't always blow. This leads to what's called curtailment, basically wasting clean energy because there's nowhere to store it. Vehicle to grid solves this. Your vehicle becomes a mobile energy storage unit. It soaks up solar and wind power when it's abundant and cheap, and it releases it back when renewable generation drops. Uyang Mingao calls this charge green electricity and replace peak power. The estimate is that by 2035, vehicle to grid technology will reduce carbon emissions by 1.7 billion tons. Now let's talk about NEO specifically because this is where you all have been waiting for me to go. NEO has been playing in this space for longer than a lot of people realize. Way back in 2019, they were already coordinating power swap stations and home chargers through NEO Power Cloud to help with the load shifting in Shanghai. They weren't just talking about this, they were actually doing it. And in February 2024, NEO Power signed a framework agreement with CSG Energy Storage Technology. That's China Southern Power grid's energy storage on. This wasn't some small partnership either. William Lee, the CEO himself, was at the signing ceremony. The focus was on virtual power plants and battery swap stations as distributed energy storage. So here's what's brilliant though about NEO's battery swapping model in this context. A swap station isn't just a place to swap batteries. It's a massive stationary energy storage facility that also happens to swap batteries. Those stations can participate in grid regulation through order forecasting and real-time load assessment. So NEO's swap stations can respond to VPP control instructions in seconds using quantum cryptography and a 5G network slicing. Also, back in January 2024, this was last year, the beginning of last year, NEO put 10 vehicle to grid destination charging stations into operation in Shanghai. These were their first such facilities in the city. And these cities were specifically designed for residential neighborhoods in partnership with state grid. So Neil might have a lot more vehicle to grid charging out there. And this is one of the details of the company that I haven't been following as extensively, but you can see that just last year they were already deploying these types of things. Um, and well before they were already playing in this space. What NEO's building here is an ecosystem where swap stations act as the backbone of energy infrastructure as well as individual vehicles, whether they're charging or whether they're swapped. Basically, everyone is gonna be able to participate in grid interaction. It's elegant and it positions them as not just a car company, but also an energy company. And this, if you're a Neo Bull, I feel like should be a big part of your bull case. It's certainly a part of mine, but I know I've been thinking about all this upside, but we've also, as we do in every episode, every video, gotta keep it real. There's legitimate challenges. The first one, and isn't this always a challenge in every arena, is cost. A basic seven kilowatt AC charging station costs less than a thousand rent. A 15 kilowatt uh, DC charging station uh, vehicle to grid make sure that you guys remember this one's vehicle to grid 
uh, used to cost over 10,000 rent. Now it costs about 5,000 rent. Cost is coming down, cost has come down, but it's still five times the, the expense of a basic DC charging station. It's a significant investment and not every vehicle supports bi-directional charging. Some need additional hardware, which increases, increases the purchase cost for the consumer. Second, and this is a big one that car owners probably care about, Battery, battery degradation, excuse me. People are rightfully concerned that frequent charging and discharging has a lot of wear, puts a lot of strain, a lot of wear and tear on their battery. Most manufacturers offer an eight year, 160,000 kilometer warranty, but there may be a disconnect between actual warranty and battery coverage. If participating vehicle to grid causes premature battery um, degradation and owners are gonna have to suffer the cost which is paying for a replacement battery which is as we know the most expensive part of an EV so manufacturers need to step up with better warranties to account for uh, this vehicle to grid technology if they intend on further uh, introducing it and uh, having it really uh, chief scale. There we've got standardization issues. Different cars have different protocols that communicate differently with different charging networks. The grid dispatching system needs upgrades to be able to handle large scale distribution. So this is classic chicken and egg infrastructure stuff. But here's why I'm pretty optimistic though. Research shows that starting in 2028, all new electric vehicles sold in China will have vehicle to grid capabilities as a standard. By 2030, over 10 million vehicles will be regularly participating in vehicle to grid. For this to work, we need coordinated action. Policy wise, we need clear standards for vehicle to grid connection, metering, and setup. We need compensation mechanisms and uh, insurance for batteries participating in these peak regulation. Automakers need to extend battery warranties and develop dedicated vehicle to grid model. Charging companies need to continue driving costs down and improving compatibility. On the tech side, we need breakthroughs in high efficiency power devices, accurate battery health assessment algorithm, and open communication protocol. So look, vehicle to grid uh, technology obviously represents a way to make uh, more than just a way to make a few a uh, couple hundred rent or dollars or money um, from your car sitting idle every year. It's a fundamental reimagining of how transportation um, and energy sectors, how these two sectors synergize. When Professor Uyang says um, EVs will become money-making tools for families, that's not hype. When he projects that massive 24 billion kilowatt hour um, energy storage facility by 2050. That's not science fiction. The technology exists right now. The economics work and the infrastructure is being built. What we're watching is a transition uh, from the traditional energy system where a source follows the load, meaning that we fire up power plants when demand spikes to load follows the source, meaning we intelligently shift when we consume power based on availability. And for NEO specifically, they're not just along for the ride, they're helping build the infrastructure between swap stations, the charging network, the VPP partnership. They're positioning themselves as a critical node in this new energy ecosystem. Is everything perfect? No. Are there challenges? Absolutely. But the trajectory is clear. By the end of this decade, the idea of your car, your EV being a mobile energy storage unit will no longer be fiction it's going to be something that's very reality. That's the revolution we're witnessing right now and we're just getting started. All right, everyone, that's it for this episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. If you found this informative, useful, um, at the very least entertaining, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, share the video, help us grow, help us get this information out to more people. That could be your good deed for the day. Anyways, um, OB signing off, happy Friday. Hope you guys enjoy the weekend. This has been the Courtside Financial Podcast. Goodbye.